When we look right now, there are 22 million workers in the United States that work for the government versus 11 million in manufacturing. In the 1950s, it was the exact opposite ratio. It was 16 million working in manufacturing and 8.5 million working in government. It's a potent interest group, as the Chicago teacher strike uh, demonstrates. You have a case where the average teacher makes on the order of 75,000 a year, earns an additional $15,000 worth of benefits. And that's compared to the median family income in the Chicago area of only 45,000. They've already received over the last four years 16 to 49 percent increases in salaries. By contrast, the cost of living over the same time period grew only 10 percent. And this is in a district that only 55 percent of the students end up finishing high school and that right now is running a $700 million annual deficit due to rising salaries and benefits. We need to rethink the ability of public sector employees to unionize. It was basically prohibited through the 1950s, and then those restrictions have been loosened. And what we've seen is union membership in the public sector grow uh, to close to 40% nowadays. What keeps restraints on trade, and we worry about um, monopolies in selling products, monopolies in selling labor. What keeps them in check in the private sector is growing competition, whether it's in the country or from overseas. There's no competition, though, of a similar nature in the public sector. Uh, ultimately, then, having public sector employees have the ability to be judge and jury and not being restrained by competition causes some dangerous outcomes to occur. We need to lean as much as possible, regardless of party, to candidates that have a more restrictive view of what government can do.